Without much further ado, let's welcome Pastor Brian Raymond Barnes. Hallelujah. It is an honor to be here this morning. Hallelujah. Uh, thank you, Pastor Tommy. Thank you. Thank you, family. Thank you, ENLC. Hallelujah. Um, for ochen kapag myself met die tang. So if you see blood here, you must know it's the blood of Jesus. Don't worry, just continue. Amen. <laughs> so I, I just need to share this before I start this morning. Um, it's really an honor to stand here. But I just want to give you also a short background uh, attached to what Pastor was saying about our relationship. And the reason why you, see, you saw me here, the reason why I decided to join me and my family. Um, while we were in the pandemic and we had our ups and downs uh, at the church where we were, and all that, and you know, most when you have the title, uh, you immediately think of starting a church. Amen? Amen. Immediately think of starting a church. And the other thing is, people come to you and say, Yeah, man, come on, man, you know, let's do our thing. You understand? And just something didn't sit right, hallelujah. And I, I prayed and I prayed and said, Lord, show us which way to go. And the thing is, God tested me because of the familiarity that I have or the, fam the familiar. Thing that I have with Pastor Tommy, and, and it's, it was kind of a, a test at would you be able to? And I thought about it, and I thought about it, and I left it. I was like, no, man. And every time he would say, I don't know, I see you guys in church. And it wasn't, it wasn't like he wants me here, but that's the, the prophetic side of how God uses him, amen. And I had to listen, but I didn't until I had a dream. And I don't know what happened in this dream, I don't know why we were running. But you know, when there are the, uh, who's the apocalypse, unbreak, amen? You don't know what's happening. <clears throat> that moment before, I'm legend, Vitaly movie I'm legend. That the moment before, Book of Eli, where was the results in the movie, but that moment where all the buildings, brand and all and I'm running. And I'm running, and I see people attacking people uh, in a guard club. And at some point in the dream, I saw him running in front of me. And then I'm running and I'm scared and all that and I don't know what and I'm trying to hide myself. I see he's running and everybody attacks people around him and not him. And I decided, let me run after him. And that's why I woke up. That is, that is my testimony this morning. That's the reason why. <laughs> hallelujah. And I still don't know why. I still don't know why it happened. Hallelujah. But the thing is, I've, I've learned. I've learned to submit. I've learned to submit. Your title does not make you a, a necessarily a shepherd of a flock. Hallelujah. It is because we, I, I, I learned over the 15 years that I've been in church, you don't lead from your title, you lead from your heart. You don't lead from your position, you lead from your heart. Hallelujah. So I'm still leading in other departments and all that, but I, I, and I still needed a lead. And my friend, my brother, thank you so much for the person that you are. Hallelujah. Come on, give praise without wasting any time. So while I give you... While I give you the introduction, go to John 5 verse 5. While I give you the uh, introduction, I'm so glad for the Spirit of God. I, I, I thank the Spirit of God this morning for the confirmation. When Pastor was come, came to the front and spoke about fear and, and, and he prayed about healing. This morning, Oshan Prat were inner healing. Hallelujah. The power of inner healing. Amen. And it's something that... Be, we don't deal with it in most cases is because we don't know how. Amen? I'm standing here and I'm going to also give you a background and a testimony of how I thought I'm fine. Amen? But you see what happens here is when, uh, like, like, let me just, let, let's just start. Let's just start at the beginning. You received pain. You received bad news. Rejection. And all that. Now it caused a certain kind of feeling in your heart, in your mind. You built a wall. Amen? You have this pain. You walk with it. You, you went to a new marriage with it. You started the business with this pain. Thinking everything is fine. Going to church and all that. But I want to remind you this morning as we start. It will not make sense until you give it to God. It will not make sense until you give it to God. I was watching a movie a few years ago. Uh, the, the staring in the movie is uh, Nicolas Cage. And it was a true story about 9-11. Remember 9-11? 
and they made a lot of movies from different angles of people that were involved in, in, in the whole collapse and all that. And these guys were uh, firefighters and they went in and Nicolas Cage was like the captain of the firefighters. They went in the building and the moment they were in, it collapsed on them. And it like literally all the building blocks and everything were on half of their bodies. You could only, you know, you could only see their heads and stuff. Throughout the movie, something that stuck with me ever since I heard that line, one of the guys said, Sir, talking to Nicolas Cage, I can't take this pain. And Nicolas Cage kept quiet. And I, I was listening, you know, we watched the movie and you want to see what's happening next. And he says, because the whole movie is as da, as ne da. And then Nicolas Cage kept quiet. And he said, Sir, why are you not talking to me? I can't feel. And he started crying. And Nicholas Cage said, I can't do anything right now. All I can say is, when you feel the pain, it means you are still alive. So when you go through it, it means you are still alive. Because now, alles, after everything, most of you lost a lot of things here. But you didn't lose your life. And that is the most powerful force because you are able to come back. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Starting over does not mean you were defeated. Amen. Amen. So I just wanted to, to give you that I understand it. I don't devalue how you feel about your, your brother-in-law, your sister, your f- absent father. The fact that God took your mother too soon. I, I don't devalue that. But while you feel the pain, just know that God is with you. Hallelujah. Because where God is, there is life. And I'm saying it again. It won't make sense until you give it to God. You will run with it and think you're fine. You give your tithe, you give your offering, you offer your life, you clean the church and you do everything, but the pain remains. Yes, it says you are alive, but you can't really love. You are unable to continue because you're stuck in a place where you don't even know how to handle it. Hallelujah. So John 5 verse 5, a well-known scripture about a guy, a lame man at the, at the pool of Bethesda. Hallelujah. Am I saying it right? Ali Hebrew people. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, try and stick to English. Hallelujah. Amen. I get groter word in the house where as you clop by the deer that they come in, as you the deer come in, you can hear them. Amen. Amen. Listen to the Lisset FM. Hallelujah. Now the heading there says, Jesus heals the lame man. Verse 5 says, one of them laying, uh, laying there had been sick for 38 years. Verse 6 says, when Jesus saw and knew he had been ill, Jesus saw him and knew that he had been in for, ill for a long time, he asked him, would you like to get well? Amen? Are you still with me? Verse 7 says, I can't, uh, uh, he said, I can't, sir. The sick man said, for I have no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles up. Hallelujah. Someone else always gets there ahead of me. Verse 8 says, and we're almost done. We're going to read until 9. Jesus told him, stand up, pick up your mat and walk. Are you with me? Instantly, verse 9. Instantly, the man was healed. He rolled up his sleeping mat and began to walk. Now, this miracle happened on the Sabbath. Now, that's a topic for another day. Let us stop there. Hallelujah. So, John 5 verse 5 just teaches us, gives us an example of how we respond with God. When God wants to deal with what you're struggling with, this is our natural response. Which is not a bad thing because it happens. You know why? Because you gave yourself in your first relationship and you were disappointed and now it's difficult to open up again. Amen. It's difficult for you to really be ready for the next person. Hallelujah. So the first thing that we're going to learn here is Jesus brushes the excuses of the lame man. He brushes off the excuses because that's what we do. That's what we, that immediately we, we, we walk into that and saying that, you know what, there's nobody that helps me. There's nobody, every time I want to do it, somebody else comes. God wants to use you in the church. Somebody else comes. And now you say, but Lord, I've been here. And Lord says, do you want to? God doesn't, Jesus didn't even talk about um, the happening and okay, tell me, who went in before you? Tell me, when did it happen? How did you feel at that moment? He doesn't even give all that attention. Amen. 
something I want to remind you of, of here is that Abraham had an excuse. Moses had an excuse. Jeremiah, we all know, he said he, he, he's too young. Moses said, I have a speech problem. Amen. Moses like, was like me, he tackle. Amen. And, and uh, he, he was also afraid of people and all that. And, and Abraham, the one that we've been learning about when pastor was teaching about the uh, understanding and, and wisdom and all that, his first excuse was, I hear what you say, God, but I don't even have a child. Because you need a child to have descendants. And that happens to us. And I want to bring your attention to the fact that God does not even look at that. God does not even think about that. He doesn't entertain that line. Amen? Amen? Because we are built like that. Every time there's a situation from school, when you go to the office and something happened in class, you need to explain. And now it comes to God and you want to use the same method. Because you were taught to explain. In the house, who broke the new glass? You need to explain. This is what happened. And God says, I'm not here to explain. It's not good that it happened to you. But it's good because it happens for you. And you don't see the four. You only see the two. Because it's all about you. you it's all about playing victim and saying, uh, why me? Why me? And said, God says, look at it. All things are working together for... Amen. If your child asks for a biscuit, you don't go to the cupboard and give him flour and a raw egg and uh, baking soda, what you call it, and all that. You give him a final result. All things work together. And the problem is we skip the process. We learn from pastor. God does not look at what you accumulate and what you do and say, God, this is because that's what happens to a lot of people. I know of two people that recently went through, through a divorce. Two months after the divorce, they extend the house. They buy a new car. I'm not trying to get into your business, but it shows what's really happening. Amen. So you're trying to cover it with all these things and God says, I'm waiting. You've been praising me in church when everything was fine, but now the real thing is happening. Where are you? Where are you? I'm in church, God. No, where are you? But I'm always there. No, no, I'm waiting for you. Where are you? Hallelujah. Now the worst thing on the number one point that I gave you right now, the worst thing of an excuse, the worst thing of an excuse is not that you lose out on an opportunity. It's not the fact that you, you might miss out on something great. It's the fact that you start believing it. An excuse is so dangerous. It's not because I tender miss. It's not because I missed all that. It's because you start believing it. Amen. Something that I that I that I learned over something that I learned, sorry. Something that I learned apparently a few years ago that uh, it is clinically, clinically proven that this is how your brain actually works. Um, and maybe correct me if I'm, I'm not right. Uh, psychologist and man, so raise your hand if you say, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brain, no brache gras, hallelujah. <laughs> apparently, your brain works like this. The more you talk about something, it thinks you've done it. Amen? The more you talk about it, it goes into a comfort zone thinking, okay, you've done it because they say, for al maldidam. Elko, who can drive? Just, just so that you look good. Amen. And that's a dangerous thing. The worst thing of an excuse is not missing out on opportunity, but it is the fact that you eventually start to believe them. You walk in that, and that's, it becomes you. Even though you say, I'm a child of God, I'm the righteousness of God, I am made in His image, you are struggling with an inner situation. Your action replaces thoughts and words of self-pity. So if you just talk about it and your brain thinks, I'm done, or even though you haven't done it yet, you haven't accomplished it yet, now you need to act on it. It's because when you look at faith, faith is what? Amen? So we, we, we need to know that I have the faith to get healed. I have the faith to move on. I have the faith to be a better person even though I went through this. But then action needs to happen. Amen? So your action... What happens here, your action replaces, it replaces the thoughts that your brain is taking and saying, we've already done it even though you haven't done it. Amen. So in other words, true faith requires action. 
So now you're getting there. You understand your pain. You understand what you went through. But at, a po- at some point, now you understand, okay, I need to do something about this. And the action that we, that we do is what I've just mentioned. You go out and you buy things, you do things, and you want to look good, and you take pictures and say, because I was talking to somebody the other day uh, who's, who's, who's having a situation with, in, in a marriage. And a few days before that, she posted pictures about herself. And when I asked her, how are you doing? She said, I'm fine. Did you see my pictures? And that's what I'm talking about. And for the past few months, God and His Spirit have been speaking to me about healing. Inner healing. Inner healing. Inner healing. Get rid of it. Amen? We hear about unforgiveness. We hear about all these things. It's the, the problem is there's a virus that you need to remove. Hallelujah. And because we don't know how to deal with it, God can't come because God is a God of protocol. Amen? That's why I asked the guy. I don't want to get ahead of myself. But he asked the guy, do you want to? Do you want to? We're going to get to that now. True faith, according to Hebrews 11.3, by faith we understand. Amen? So the, the, the scripture starts in, in verse 1. It starts with a well-known traditional, I won't say traditional, but the well-known one. Even pastor spoke about it last week at the Rock Church under Pastor Shannon. And he spoke about faith and while, while listening and while recording the message, this is what I also got. When you go further, it starts by saying faith is the of things hoped for, the evidence of things not? Hallelujah. So when you go further, the author here wants to direct your mindset to the fact that by faith, we understand that the worlds and the universe were created. We know that part. But after that, it says, by faith, Moses. By faith, Enoch. It doesn't continue to say we understand. You remember the teaching of understanding? Amen? So in other words, the reason why I feel and I I get this from from this part, the reason why the author didn't say by faith we understand that Moses did this is because even Moses understood. Even Moses understood. He understood. Enoch understood. The reason why he didn't die, he was just transitioned to heaven. Amen? Amen? The reason why Abel came and he gave a better offering was because he understood. That's where it starts. Hallelujah. I like what Pastor mentioned last week. He said that before, I, I never even saw it like that. I thought when God said, let there be light, man, I'm honest with you. I thought when God said, let there be light, let there be light, let there be light, let there be light, let there be let there be light, let there be light, And last week it opened up to me. Pastor said, when God said, let there be light. And when you look at, what is it? Verse 3, 4, uh, uh, 14, 15. That's when the sun and the moon was created. And I will never forget what he said. He said that God wants to deal with the darkness before he creates light. So the the, the breakthrough is not in the sun. It's not in the moon. Amen. It is in in God saying, let there be light. Hallelujah. So when I, I speak that God will remind you that, you know what, before you look for a switch to switch on the light, I'm speaking over your life. Let there be light. Come on. Amen. Amen. Before we create something new, remember the the first verse says, the earth was dark without form. Before we put people on this earth, let us deal with the darkness. Amen. Amen. You've not dealt with it in in God's way. We thank God for your psychologist, your therapist, and all the pastor about us. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But there's something about, because I'm not saying you shouldn't. If you study that and all that, you want to be a psychologist and a therapist and men's about counseling and all that, it's okay. Because at some point in my marriage, I thought I understood everything. And I even told my wife, what can do not with man? Because she asked, she said, you know what, I think it was in the first three years, four years, to go for counseling. People of God, I get to Because I'm in church. Ek is an idio, hè? Huh? Huh? Ek jam dan op stage. Wat gaan die mense vir my sê? Ek weet hoe werd dit. Halleluja. And then what I did was, I took that and I said, God, now I have this knowledge. What is the way? How, how do I do it? Halleluja. Kom ons morsie tyd nie. So in other words, be, 
Because they also understood. Because Moses and Enoch and Abel and all those guys, they also understood. Let's talk about faith quickly. Hallelujah. While editing pastors, teaching also. I could buy me, Pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. Everything about you, you need your pastor called me. Amen. Did you get that one? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Amen. What, I'm, what I want to say is, um, we, we spoke about faith at the Rock Church. And the, the powerful thing was, um, uh, he spoke about faith is currency. Faith is currency. So I, was just, I just want to show you something. I just want to show you something. Can I make my geld spiel? Now, when you look at this piece of paper, it didn't get nuts me. Amen? It is nothing. Bear with me if you've heard this or if you know this. Hallelujah. Uh, but there's a signature on here. Where is it now? That's it. The governor's signature, ne? LK Ghanyago. What is that? Amen. So what happens here is when you look at faith, because the exact words was faith is currency and currency is a promise. Amen. Faith is currency. And, 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 and Pastor taught us in the wisdom series, he said that uh, wisdom is the way of God and faith is the currency. Amen. It is the promise of God. Hallelujah. So when you look at the promise, when you look at this piece of paper right here, this is the substance in my hand. Amen. But it won't mean anything. This doesn't even mean anything in another country at the moment. Unless you exchange it. Eh? So there's no, But the thing, the powerful thing about it is when you go to a shop right now and you want something within the area of this, the value of this money, you will get it. Amen. So what is so powerful about it? It is the signature. Now the signature here is basically a promise from the government. Amen. It is a promise from the government to say that, you know, when they have that piece of paper with the signature on, you can give them anything they want. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's what we say when the, when, when the Word of God says, faith is the substance. Faith is the substance. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Come on. So that's what we need to understand when it comes to faith. So we spoke about, on number two, we spoke about now you have the faith, you see yourself being a different person, and now there's something else that is very important. Basically, what I'm going to talk about now is, is consistency in your decision. Amen. Number three says, are you committed to your own healing? So when we look at the scripture, Come on, the scripture too. It says that Jesus asked him, verse 6, the last part of that sentence. He says that, would you like to get well? Would you like to get well? Now the question here is, how committed are you to your healing? How committed are you to your healing? Do you just want to get over it? Because it's not an emotional feeling. It's more than an emotional feeling, people. You feel happy when things are all right and when you have got an SMS from APSA. It's an emotional level. But God says, how committed are you to your healing? You have the faith. You understand what you went through. You understand the pain. You understand that it, it won't make sense unless you give it to me. Yes. Progress. Amen. But now I want to know, do you want to? Do you want to? How bad do you want it? Because God does not need a pool to heal you. God didn't say he should jump in like everybody else. God, because his, his healing was in the response. When he gave an excuse, Jesus, it led Jesus to saying, pick up your mat. But the woman that touched Jesus didn't even have a conversation. So his response determined his healing. Because he gave an excuse. Jesus said, okay, pick up. But if he said, if he didn't say anything, I believe with all my heart. Amen. Amen. So Jesus asked him, 
In other words, what this guy did was he exchanged what he hears from God with what he sees happening. He sees that this is a reality. Because he, I don't have it. I don't have the degree. I don't have that. I don't have what they have. I won't be able to do it. I'm here to encourage somebody. Do not exchange what you hear from God with what you see happening in your life. You know what God spoke to. How God spoke to you in your secret place. Why when you come to the natural, you now submit and you just say, Ek weet nie. I'm not sure. Hallelujah. Amen. So beyond faith, listen to this, beyond faith, after faith, commitment is commitment in which the tables are turned, hallelujah, as we show the depth of our true belief through our consistent actions. Beyond faith, there is a level of commitment. How bad do you want to be healed? How bad do, bad do you want to change? Amen. So beyond com- uh, faith is commitment. So in other words, when we look at Daniel's life and his friends, Daniel and his friends had every reason to just submit. I mean, there was fire, there was lions. Come on. Amen. It, it, was, it was something, according to what they saw, because it's, it's real. Amen. Even van dag, maak jy sak hoe Christen jy is nie, and I'm not saying it's impossible, but jy het al gebrand. Amen. Ek doe net geworship to brand jy. Hallelujah. Because God, God cannot be tested and say, you know, because I'm a Christian, Daniel faced a lion, ek gaan intlim daar by Kruger National Park. It doesn't work like that. Hallelujah. And nobody can really explain it. I, I'm sorry. I don't care what kind of bishop level you are. I don't think you'll be able to explain un- unless God gives you really the revelation. Because that's the thing that we struggle with. When we come to God, we expect things to happen according to what happened in the Bible. And we don't read and understand that, you know what, there was a different reason why God allowed that to happen. Amen? The same way we read one line over a whole chapter and then we run with it and we forget about what it says at the beginning and towards the end. And also, why it happened. Because remember, what was right for Moses was wrong for Joshua. From the same God. Does it make sense? The same God what instructions gegeet. But he comes and Joshua wants, maybe he had at a point where he wants to do it because he saw his leader was doing it. And God says, ay, 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 your ways are not mine. You heard her testimony. You heard his testimony, but I'm dealing with you in a different way. I came through for them within three months. It's been six years. I'm still busy with you. Amen. Let's not do that. Let's not go around looking and saying, but Ezri, here and now me bekeer. Wat gaan aan? God says, because your answer determines your healing. She kept quiet when I asked her a question. You wanted to explain. Let's continue. The last one that I just want to uh, share under point number three, your commitment for your healing. This is Ampratla. We spoke about Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Lion, fire, all that. When I looked at Abraham's life, when God showed him, told him, you know, after the whole thing, God, I don't have a child. God says, I'm going to give you descendants and they're going to be this number and this number. Finally got the son. God says, I want you to sacrifice him. Now you know the story. But something that I want to point out here is the fact that this guy had 72 hours. 72 years of his mind to change. Because it took him three days to get to the point where God said, I need you to do it there. Because the Bible says that on the third day, he told his servant, stay here with the donkey, I'm going up with my son. Amen. So this guy could have decided, man, I think he get But the level of commitment, how bad he wanted, he, he didn't just want descendants, he wanted the relationship. Because your healing is in the relationship. It's not what God gives you. 
Your healing is in God's face, seeking God's face, not just His hand. Hallelujah. So it's about relationship, a certain level of relationship. Hallelujah. When you look at Jeremiah 29 verse 11, a lack of scripture, but when it, in, in, in 11, 12 and 13, it says that in those days, when you pray, I will answer you. And when you seek me with your whole heart, I will be there. You will find me. Amen. So it's not a condition. It's a relationship. It's a level of relationship. We've gone into relationships with conditions. That's why you are scared of the other relationships or new relationships. Because you mix those things. So when I tell my son, I'm not going to buy you this because you didn't do that. It is not because of the material things. It's relationship. I'm trying to teach him principles. Amen. Buying things and doing things for children don't change anything. You know that. You've seen that. Whether it's yourself or with what you do with your child right now, it happened. Because we confuse that. Relationship with conditions. Because that's what life is. The system created that. As a did don't create thee. Aha. As a die don't create die. And God says, where are you? I'm waiting for you. Yeah, I am God. Uh, I give tight. Niemand gaan unbreaken me is nie. Come on. Even if it doesn't happen, it doesn't mean it's because you gave that. Amen. It's the relationship. Abraham's breakthrough was the fact that he was tested in his relationship. He was tested in his relationship, his commitment in his relationship. And the fact that God saw that this guy is committed, his breakthrough was, now I can give him descendants. Amen. Let's go to the last point and we're done. Am I helping somebody? Are we learning? The fourth one, because when Jesus said, pick up, Jesus said, get up, pick up your mat, and he rolled it up, and he walked. He's on baby pool. The, the healing is there. But the man said, you and loop. You're going to come for the pool. And he says, pick up and, and walk. But when you read that part there, let's quickly go to it. Come now. Verse 8, Jesus told him, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. This is immediately after his reaction, after his, his response. Immediately after that. So in other words, you don't need a real ritualistic process for God to change things in your life. Because we always work on references. Amen? We work on references because other parts of the Bible, Jesus took mud, he spit on the mud and he like physically did something. But this guy, he said it from it. And then that's our problem sometimes because ons werk op hoe dit gedoen was. You need to jump seven times in order for you to get it. You need to fast 21 days in order for you to get it. Amen? And I hope you understand what I'm saying when I'm even, I even even mention fasting and tithing and all that. I'm not against these things. I, I, I really hope that we understand this. Amen? So, Alles wat ons doen, is altijd, I mean, you do what you do in your house, 60-80% because of what you saw in your father's house, or in your mother's house. And it's, it's, it's okay, it's okay. But the thing is, we do it to God as well. God says, I'm too small for your box. I'm too big, sorry, I'm too big for your box. Your box is too small for me. Amen. Your box of understanding is too small for me. Because he set me up a level where it never worth me. And he says that you don't need lightning. You don't need a party and donkeys and a red carpet to say I'm healed. He just says get up. Hallelujah. So Jesus instructed the layman to pick up his mat. And um, so even when we look at when Jesus turned water into wine. Amen. When Jesus turned water into wine, when you look at the scripture right there, uh, uh, John 2, verse 7 and 8. Amen. John 2, verse 7 and 8, where, he, where they came to him and said, the divine is slah. And I'm not talking about wine. Amen. People came and said, a slah. And his mother, you know, asked him, can I do not believe And he had his conversation with the man, and all those things. But eventually when he decided to do it, listen to the instruction. 
He told him, fill the jars with water. Fill the jars with water. That's your action part that we spoke about, your faith and all that. Now you do it. And the moment they did it, he said, pour some of, the, of it out. When you go and read that, and all the fertilians were us of the Arda. He doesn't say pour out the wine and go give to the MC. He says pour it out and go give it to the master of ceremonies. And when the master of ceremonies tasted the water, he tasted wine. What did that happen? Was that a ritualistic process? Mensen het niet geweer dat het gebeur nie. What am I saying this morning? It already happened. And because of your response, it prolonged the whole thing. Your healing has happened a year ago. It happened two months ago. But every time you see your ex or you, see, you hear your ex-boss saying something or you see somebody posting something that you don't like or you broke up or I don't know what examples I can use. It comes back. Amen? It comes back. Even, uh, even the moment, uh, I, I, I like to use the scripture, even the moment when Jesus took the, the fish and the bread, men say, ek stikkel altyd om te sê, wat was twee en wat was vijf? Was it the fish or was it the brood? Two fish. Okay, ga hem so en doe, ek gaan een t-shirt maak, two fish. Wat ek kom nie vergeet nie, for all these years, when I talk about the scripture, ek struggle op te vind, wat is vijf, was it the brood of die? Alright, two fish and five loaves. Two fish and five loaves. He just took them, raised them to heaven, thanked God, and the Bible says, immediately after thanking God to break it, do it gebeur. I'm just trying to encourage you to remember that, you know, you know it happened at some point. You know it happened at some point, and we're closing now. I was in Bloemfontein, um, I was in a youth conference, and I was with uh, Pastor Ashley Sauls, also known as Mbiza. We went, we were both invited from Gauteng. And uh, the Sunday morning, so this youth conference happened over a uh, Father's Day weekend. It was on Sunday, Father's Day. So obviously it's youth weekend. We've been there since Thursday, a Friday or something. And then, and then uh, Sunday morning is Father's Day service. And then we close the evening and all that. And while in worship, no, so it was all for you. It was all for ons pastoor, ons was voorsit met langskoene en, en, en alles. So we were sitting in front and, and because you, you preached on Saturday, you feel like you, you, you worship us on another level, you stand up for and it's all as here. And at some point, I, I just broke down. Now, I didn't grow up with my father. He was there. Ek het hom net gelijk vir hy groot rand. Want doe jylle die groot rand? Oorl waarom ek reg jy my die dik rand. Oei, jyne. Met die springbok. Oh, springbok, ne? En so I didn't have a relationship with him until now. I, I tried even after that when I now, you know, to throw and all this. I want him to see my children. But I see Danny, you understand? Anyway, so remember what I said earlier. I thought I was fine. I thought I was okay with it. Because even four day, come on, it We were driving home from Spa, and Keres was sitting at the back. And Keres asked me, Daddy, how do you know to be a father? Who taught you? Because you said you didn't grow up with a father. I couldn't answer him. I could heal. Amen. And gelukkig sit hy achter dat hy nie sien ek heel nie. Amen. And at that service, it's Father's Day. At that service, worship. And I broke down and I couldn't stand. I fell on my knees. And while on my knees, I cried. And I get ge... Ons was nooit van tevore geheel nie. Ek het geheel... Ons was a klein kind. I don't know what came over me. The Spirit of God. Hallelujah. And it's fine. Because we are in that moment, we are in that moment, and all the worship around me, and the people fall, and it's what happens. And Ombiza came to me, and I felt somebody touching me. And he touched me, and he started praying. And I said, okay, it's fine. Pray, pray. And he came closer to my ear to say for me, when you fell down, I saw a dark cloud over your life. I'm getting emotional now. I saw a dark cloud over your life. And when you fell down, it went away. Amen. So, to, when I talk about it already happened, I think and I feel that was my moment where it happened, my inner healing. 
Because I'm, I'm not hard at forgiving. I'm not, it's not difficult for me to do it. Amen. People did things to me now when the following day and asked for forgiveness. Amen. Even if I know I wasn't wrong and all that. You understand? But at that moment right there. So between that, I think that was 2018, 17, 18. But between then and now, the reason why I sometimes maybe feel, why am I stuck in this? Why am I struggling in this? Maybe I had an excuse. Amen. Amen. I'm not trying to get you emotional. Hallelujah. Maybe I had an excuse. Maybe I said, but Lord, look at me. And that was my breakthrough. And I just held on to that moment. I wasn't committed to my healing. I had faith. What brought me there to that point was my faith. I was in the service. I was there. And everything that we spoke about right now. But I want to tell you something. It already happened. Some of you are on scar level. Some of you are on wound level. This is still a wound. The blood comes not it. But I pray this morning, the same way your body works, when you look at your white cells, your white cells are there to protect the wound. Ne? Ne? They're there to protect from infection. Amen? And then the red blood cells come and do what? They rebuild tissue for healing. Amen? And I pray this morning in the name of Jesus that God will heal you, spiritual white cells and spiritual red blood cells, that you will just get to a point and understand that you know what? I'm tired of fighting with this. Amen. Amen. So if you are on a wound level, you are still hurt, you don't want to talk about it, I pray that God will open your heart this morning. If you are on scar level, it's healed outside, but you are ashamed. I also want to pray for you this morning. Because the word of God says a true testimony saves a life. Amen. And we also overcome the enemy by the word of our testimony. So I'm not saying blacker all your goeders eat for enige enie. But God wants to use you. God wanted to use you with your colleague that cried in the office. And you, because you, you drive a certain car, you didn't want to be vulnerable. So even if on your scar level, you are still ashamed. Amen.